Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I want to share with you a video talking about the the attention that's going within Splinterlands to Rebellion at this moment. And I think I've got some data to share with you that is going to maybe open some eyes to some opportunities for you if you're new to Splinterlands, if you're acquiring a deck within Splinterlands like me. If you're new to my channel, my name is Dwayne Cunningham. I go by Infidel1258. You can call me 12. Leave comments on any video. I try to read them regularly and make video content out of them. So I will do my best to answer your question. And if I do, and if you leave your IGN, I might just send a little thank you. So as I was looking at my my card data analysis, like I, I, I track how much my cards are worth. I use Peak Monsters and I come into my cards and I see what my collection's valued at. And and I track this data on an ongoing basis. It's not, you know, you know, it is anecdotal and it's not exhaustive. Like I don't check every day, every week, every hour. Um, there's no routine. It's just when I think to it, like, and I, and I am begin, beginning to formulate and let's like, um, build a, a, a substantial amount of data that I'm, I think is becoming more and more valuable to look at. And I think it points to trends. I think it tells us something about where we're at. And I think right now in this moment, it's got something to say to us about how we're handling rebellion and how we're, you know, navigating the SPS is bull at 3.3 cents. Great, but it's still not at 5 cents, 10 cents, 20 cents. And uh, our collections are still lower than they used to be. And so it's like a bull moment, but it's still cautiously optimistic is really where what I see. So let's look at some data and I want to unpack why I'm coming to that perspective and what I think the opportunity for each of us might be in this moment. Okay, this is my mo most recent data from uh, from tabulating my card collection, and it goes all the way back to May. And again, it's an anecdotal meaning. It's just like one example. It's not like a wide, I don't have market analysis, but I think this is going to be representative of many of you who have a, who have an interest in any one of these particular assets. Cause I have, a, you know, enough alpha that, it, that this probably points to how alpha generally are doing, et cetera, betas, promos, et cetera. And as you can see back in May, we were at $50,000 from our card collection and it breaks down um, with the biggest being chaos and the second biggest being reward. It was it would have been even higher prior to that. Maybe a year before that would have been 150, maybe 100,000. Um, so definitely a significant fall from the, the tippy top. But you know, as we look at where we're at today, we're at 33,000 and even where we are at the local high since September, which is two months ago, uh, is last week. So we've been in a pretty stable place is what I'm saying since September, um, September 22nd, 35,000, 35,000, 26,000 was a massive decline in, into October. November stayed stable at that low level. And then we started building a, a base and kind of climbing out. Now 35 feels like it's a bit of a, um, like a stability as harkening back to the September there. But it's not just these broad general totals I want to look at. What I want to point to is, you know, the preliminary information around Rebellion. Rebellion's only been out for a couple of weeks, a uh, few weeks, but I've been tracking it since the day I opened my first four pack, my first 120 packs. I opened 120 packs and theoretically that should be, you know, $4 a pack. Um, so it should be $480 worth of value. It was worth about $440 right at the outset because of just card values that I ended up pulling. And then you guys well know that there's not a lot of supply. You look at the rental market, you look at, you know, the sell market, like there's those cards are, are doing well, but that is what I, that trend is important to understand. It's not just, it's not just that rebellion is doing well in isolation, but it is, it's important to understand that to the extent that rebellion is doing well, other assets are doing, are suffering. And I, I think that's what the data is really showing us as we see some of these legendaries go up in price. Maybe let's focus on a couple that I, I know have gone up in price. A cane was selling for, I want to say 15 at the outset. And I really wish I just kind of jumped on that. I, I don't remember the exact numbers. It might've been bigger than that, but it, it has been really relatively stable in the 28 to 35 range for the, for as long as I've been tracking it, as long as I've been taking it seriously. I got one of those during my 400, my 120 packs. I bought one more since that point at around 30 bucks or something like that. Um, I feel like Darg was maybe 13 bucks. And he's up to 18. I did have one sold it. I had one Commander Goff. I feel like that was relatively the same price. I had one Burrow Dallin. I might have been a couple dollars more. 
I think, I guess what I'm noticing then is that certain assets within the, within the rebellion are being chased after. And I, I bet, I bet if I looked at the rare, we would see one of them soothsayer. Where is it? Probably down at the bottom. Yeah. And a soothsayer, one of the most expensive rare cards in the rebellion set. And, you know, maybe even in the game, if I had to, if I pulled away, let's go rare. Are we doing not it? I guess not in the game. Cause there's always some of the craziest. Let's go. Some of the oldie, oldie, oldies, but I bet it is down here somewhere. Let's see so three bucks, four bucks, uh, buck 50. Oh, these are not exactly ordered by entirely. Yes, they are. There it is right there. I mean, it's, it's well, it's got maybe 20, 30 cards above it, including alphas and betas and promos. Uh, including some really old school cards so this is obviously being chased after and certain cards like that are are definitely um making rebellion we are chasing after those and i think a, a bit if we look at the promos that's the other side of it too right it's not the um not the rares it's the it's the common the common promo that we just got grim barton 350 per bcx this was maybe three dollars and before that well lower mantaroth also 30 bucks, 25 bucks at launch. Um, 37 is looking pretty, you know, stable. So the point is, as these assets do well, others struggle. And if you recognize that, and if you see other cards as being desirable, even Rebellion, even, or I mean, even Rift Watchers, even Chaos, even Dice, even Untamed, those prices are actually on the fall. And, and I think it's just important to recognize that everybody's chasing after rebellion right now. Those who are spending on Splinterlands are doing so with rebellion. They're not buying chaos packs. They're not buying, you know, chasing after, you know, even plots of land or not, are not are they're doing better, but they're not in this way growing. So is rebellion up a ton? No, but some of the assets, the key assets that you know about that are from rebellion are doing really well because everybody wants them. And, and how are they paying for them? Are they bringing in fresh money? Probably not mostly because that's why these other card collections are falling. Look at this. Actually alpha's up a little. People got sick and tired. Alpha bled out over here, 3,200 down here, 1,400, 1,300, 1,300. And now it's just kind of been pumping because of land a little bit. Uh, but it's still quite small compared to where it used to be in May and well before well before that also. But just look at what's down. Uh, beta's down a little bit. Uh, promo's down a good 15%, 10%. Uh, rewards are down a mm, couple of percent. Dice Untamed's down a, a bit more. And look, it's down a lot since November. Uh, Dice is down another substantial amount. Like, I mean, look, November 1,050 for my deck 7 760 for my deck so dice chaos dice chaos and untamed have fallen a f like a quite a bit and promos too like older promos not the grim bardens and not the mandaroths so if you see opportunities in those cards like if there are if there are cards and assets within those within those sets chaos legion untamed dice that you think would have long term value for you it's really important to think through what you're doing here. Are you chasing after the, the two or 10 different card assets in this game that everyone else is currently chasing after? Because if so, you're paying a premium and you think, well, I've got to have them. I've got to win. I'm losing every time if I don't get them. And maybe you are losing a fair amount when you when you don't have access to those cards. But, but I do think there's a cost reward that you need to consider. Is there a value to having it? Yes. Is there a value? Is there a, is there a disadvantage to waiting? Yes. But the financial consideration needs to be brought to bear. And when you start seeing, I think rebellion up, like probably, you know, especially the key cards up dramatically. I, I just, I think to myself, I wouldn't want to buy it right now. And I'm not buying those cards right now. I want Grim Barton Smith. I want Mad Taroth. I will have them one day. I don't care if I pay double what they are right now. One day I will have them, but I will have them after these other assets pump. Because if, if you if you follow that logic, you get 
you can oper you can move into less expensive t assets cards that are i don't mean just junk cards that like you know have no value have no long-term utility i mean cards that truly allow you to win because there are chaos legion untamed and dice cards that are still meaningful that still move the needle particularly offering opportunity in wild but also in guild brawls and tournaments those are going to provide financial revenue and, and opportunity for players they're going to have a desirability they're going to have an increased price tag and i think those multipliers will grow faster than some of these new rebellion cards which everyone's chasing after it's like if everyone's going left i want to go right that's the that's what i'm talking about here and i think the data is showing us that all assets are falling at least a little bit and and that rebellion is either going up on many of those key cards or holding stable on the average and i think again if you're interested in untamed dice or chaos there are always card options in there if we look back across the six months or whatever i've been tracking chaos is like r almost at its low well it was in eight thousand here so we're at we're we're up about 20 percent since then but i mean we're well down i'm not saying rush into chaos either i'm saying always look at the different options that are in front of you and, and recognize that there are probably 20 different cards that you need, that you quote unquote need to, to do better at your league and where you how you play this game. And, and chasing after the same five or 10 resources that everyone else does is not gonna be the path to stretch your dollar and get the most out of your time and attention from Splinterlands. I hope that was helpful. I hope you're interested in this content. If you are, consider liking and subscribing. If you want more content from me, maybe even a members only access, uh, check out the members page on the web on the youtube channel thanks guys have an amazing day god bless and merry christmas